Hello, so welcome to lecture one on Bayes' theorem. This is just basic probability, so um, I've got my notes on the side and I'm just going to write here. So first thing it says, probability A, probability that event A occurred. So P of A just means the probability that event A occurred. In probability theory, events are either occurring or not occurring so probabilities apply to binary events events that either happen or they don't happen um, and if either occur or not occurring if the experiment is repeatable then probability of A is the proportion of times that A occurs if you do the experiment lots of times and the probability of 1 means that the event always occurs so if we write P of A equals 1 that means A always occurs and P of A equals zero, that means A never occurs. And then if we call A bar, A with a little hat on it, the event, the opposite event to A. This is a not occurring. Then P of A bar is just the probability that A doesn't occur. And if we do any any experiment. Uh, a either occurs or it doesn't occur. The binary experiment's got two outcomes. One of those two outcomes will happen. So what that means is that what always happens is that either probability of A or probability of not A will actually have a probability of 1 because that will definitely occur and now we've got so that's basic that's basically what prob probabilities are they uh, it's based on you've got a space of possible outcomes uh, you do the experiment you find out does uh, do the events occur or not occur so you have to be precise about what the events are you perform the experiment and then you get a result and the result will be uh, it either occurred or it didn't occur and that's uh, and, and the probability just assigns how likely it is to occur if it's very likely to occur then it's going to be close to a probability of 1 and if it always occurs it will be a probability of 1 and if it very rarely occurs then the probability will be close to 0 and if it occurs half the time then the probability will be 1 half and if it occurs 3 quarters of the time the probability will be 3 quarters so that kind of is a sort of solidish foundation of what are probabilities and then it starts to get interesting when we consider probability of A and B so now we've got two separate events A and B and P of A comma B is a probability A occurs and B occurs the probability that A and B both occur can be viewed in two different ways so imagine we've done the experiment and we've got whether A occurred and whether B occurred and 
we are going to process that information. So, so maybe we start by looking at A. Yeah. So what's the probability that A occurred? Now we know if A has already occurred or not. So the probability that B occurs after seeing the A, I'll put a line here to say after seeing the A, And if we multiply those two together, probability of A times probability of B, given that we've already seen A, then that would be the same as the overall probability of A and B. Because if you think about it, all we've done is we looked at A first, and we know, okay, the probability uh, of A is going to be P of A. And then we, we, we wanted to know what is the proportion of times uh, given A that B occurs, and that's the probability of B given A. And when we multiply those together, that's the same as working out what's the probability that both A and B occur. But we could have started with B instead, and then we would have had P of B times the probability of A given B, because we've already seen B, and it's the probability of A given B. And surprisingly enough, that information there is pretty much Bayes' theorem. So it's actually very, very simple. But the simplicity um, uh, in the basic concept um, doesn't. Um, this can be expanded, it's very, very useful. Um, so even though it's very simple, it's actually extremely. Um, powerful uh, in terms of uh, predictive modeling of any kind because here so far we've assumed that A uh, is just a single binary event but this all works if A is A is lots of events and so if A was a vector maybe capital A and B was a vector capital B then this all still works and because of that you can build uh, kind of complicated models uh, in the next part what I'm going to do is talk about how the parameters can be viewed what we do is we view maybe we say oh B is like the data that we observe and A is like the parameters of the model that we construct. And this way of looking at it means we have a lot of flexibility about how we build the model, what sort of model we use, and uh, we can be very precise about the assumptions we're making in terms of what those parameters are. Um, okay, thank you for listening.